Practicing independently at home, while most convenient, also presents many unique challenges. Unlike a residential or monastic situation, there is nobody to tell you, now is the time to do zazen. There is no schedule, and you are accountable to nobody but yourself for your own practice. Therefore, cultivating and maintaining a consistent and stable practice on your own can be difficult, particularly at the beginning. Many people begin a meditation practice, but before long, daily responsibilities and habits make it seem as if even a few minutes on the cushion would be better spent getting something else done. In the beginning, Zen practice can be physically uncomfortable. We just aren't used to sitting still and straight for any period of time. Sometimes difficult thought patterns or emotions arise in practice. If we are busy in our lives, it can also seem like a huge waste of time, even just a few minutes. Of course, if we consider the amount of time we spend in a single day watching or listening to commercials, surfing the web, or in other idle ways, and compare that with the benefits of meditation practice, even just the physical ones that are becoming more and more well documented, we can see that our meditation time is, in fact, time well spent. Even so, when we are facing our cushion in the morning, these deterrents to practice can seem entirely real and completely reasonable. As a result, we choose not to sit, which makes it an effort the next day. A week later, we are back at square one. There are many things that we can do to support ourselves as we begin our meditation practice. The first is to be patient. Zen meditation, contrary to its appearance, is a deeply physical practice. Even after a few periods of meditation, this is something that you will know for yourself through experience. Like any other physical practice, it is best approached gradually, consistently, and with as much support as possible. This is why we strongly recommend following our four-week program as it is laid out on our website at zenwest.ca. Registering for our online support program is also highly recommended, as accountability has proven time and time again to be one of the most effective motivators and supports in cultivating a stable practice. In this video, we will offer some suggestions about home practice, things you can do to help nourish, support, and sustain your practice as you get started and continue into a lifetime of awakening. There are no shoulds. You aren't required to incorporate any of these suggestions into your own home practice. We recommend that you experiment with these elements and honestly observe whether these considerations support you in or deter you from practice. Keep what works and leave the rest aside. Over time, what works may change. Don't hesitate to explore new supports. The key is to reflect on whether it helps you get your butt on your cushion every day. If it does, then do it. Where we sit makes a difference. Practice is much easier to sustain if we make space for it, not just in our calendars, but also in our home. Having to move furniture, clear space, or roll up pillows each time we want to sit can very easily become just enough deterrent for our fledgling practice to crumble. Take some time to consider and establish your own Bodhi Mandala, or Seat of Awakening. You don't need much space just enough for you to sit. Keep it clean and ready so that all you need to do is sit down and breathe. In our Sangha, all practitioners are required to wear practice attire for communal formal practice. For a newcomer, this is a black martial arts style gi. Just as a runner has purpose-specific running attire or a dancer has purpose-specific dancing attire, we use purpose-specific Zen practice attire. In each of these cases, the function of the clothing is not just practical, but also psychological. 
Putting on purpose-specific clothing helps us to get in the mindset of doing what we are about to do. Before we sit on our cushion, we are already in a space of practice. When we are practicing at home or at a distance from the community that we are connected to, wearing purpose-specific attire also helps to remind us of our connection to our Sangha. Many people find having a butsudan or shrine provides inspiration and an aspect of ritual that they find supports their practice. Traditional elements of a butsudan are the main figure, most often a Buddha or Bodhisattva that will inspire your practice, but it can just as easily be a beautiful stone, a piece of wood, a poem, or a piece of art. The essence is that it is a representation of what you aspire to realize and manifest yourself through practice. Flowers represent the sila, an upright life lived ethically, which, like flowers, is a joy to behold and is welcomed by all. Incense represents samadhi, which is the profound awareness of the universal, interpenetrating nature of all things in this vast cosmos. The candle, light itself, represents prajna, the fundamental wisdom that illuminates the great way. Many people use incense while meditating. It is a traditional way of expressing gratitude for the teaching and practice of Zen Buddhism. Wonderfully fragrant, it is also one way of timing how long you are sitting for. Simply break a stick of incense to the appropriate length, and when you become aware that it has burned out, your session is complete. If a particular type of incense is burned in your Sangha during formal practice, Burning the same incense can be another way of affirming your Sangha connection. Doing great bows before or after Zazen or seated meditation is also a wonderful way to embody formal practice at home. In Zen, when we make great bows, we are not belittling ourselves or holding up another as greater or more powerful. We are not worshipping graven images or groveling. In bowing, we allow the idea that we are separate from what we are facing to drop away or dissolve. Having completely emptied out, we arise anew, aware of our intimate relationship with all things. Great bows are most often practiced in multiples of three. Chanting before and or after your daily sitting is another way you can nourish a stable practice. Chanting the same sutras used in your Sangha is a great way to affirm your connection with your community. Our chant book and MP3 recordings of our chanting are available on our website at zenwest.ca. Remember, in the end, your home practice is your own. Do it in whatever way you see fit. The suggestions in this video are just that, suggestions. Experiment with them. If you find something supports you well, then keep it. If something turns you off, leave it out. The important thing is that you stay inspired to practice so that your practice continues to inspire your life.